Assignment Types, Part 3. Collaborative Assignments. A collaborative assignment is one where you want students to work collaboratively and have access to and can edit the same file as their classmates or perhaps a small group. In this case, all the students are working on the same file together. So let's take a look at what how you would set this type of assignment up. So for this example, I want my students to work on this story map. So very simply, they're going to do their title, and then I have a series of four slides. So this might be an activity that I would use in a small reading group. But I want all of the students in my group to be working on the same thing. I don't want four individual projects. I want one project from the group. So to do this, I'm going to create my assignment and, of course, give it a title. and as before a set of directions. Now it's going to be very important that when you are working and creating a collaborative assignment that you're very clear in what you want your students to complete. Especially since again and letting them know that they are working on the exact same file. So in this case in my directions I've indicated that I want each student to complete a certain slide and to make it even easier for them I've color coded it. So there's a pink slide, yellow, blue, and green. This is just one of those little management tips that's going to make this process go a little bit smoother. And of course, it would depend on the grade level of the students that you are working with. This time, I'm going to hit my Add button, and I'm going to go to Google Drive. And once again, I'm going to pull up my slideshow that I want. So in this case, here's my story map, and I'm going to hit Add. So like just before when I did my template assignment, this whole setup piece is going to be the same. The difference is going to be in the option that I choose from my drop-down menu. Instead of students can view the file or make a copy for each student, I'm going to choose this students can edit the file. This means all students will have access to this one single file. Now, in this case, depending on how I was doing this and the size of my class, I might want to give um, assign this to just a couple of students in my class. So maybe I just want four students to see this assignment. So I would go under my assignments over on the right hand side under students and select just the four that I would want. You of course can do this with much larger groups as well. For our purposes I'm just going to do a small group. And as before set my points, my due date, and of course my topic. And once again I'm going to come up to assign. So a couple of things to talk about with collaborative assignments. One, why do we like them? Well, we really like our students to be able to collaborate and share their ideas with one another. And so this ability to have them working within the same document really brings that opportunity uh, regardless of where students are. And again, they can be working on it at the same time or they could be working on it um, independently of, from one another whenever is most convenient for them. It's also really ideal for small group projects. So one way that you might use a collaborative assignment is in a small group research project. Uh, they all have the same topic, but each student is going to be researching a specific question related to that overarching um, topic. It's also really good for those PBL assignments. It also allows students to share the workload. But of course, with that, we always have some guidelines on how to really work, make that work. So one, again, as I did in my example, you're going to want to make sure that you provide guidelines for where each student should be working. You can color code the slides. You could number the slides and tell students they're responsible for a certain subset of those. You, of course, could put their name on the slide and they have to find the slide that they are going to be responsible for. It really depends on the group. You really need to know your students when working on these collaborative assignments. You can always go back. Remember, a lot of people get very um, concerned when working in collaborative projects and what students may or may not do. And this is where version history is going to be your friend. Version history in Google um, Slides or Docs or Sheets or Drawings is going to allow you to restore any accidental deletions. If someone um, by accident deletes somebody else's slide or takes out a picture that really needed to be there. Version history is your friend for that. It also is a great way to monitor behavior. If you are concerned that maybe a student or two are typing things that are inappropriate, because they're working in Google, because they are signed in under their account, you're going to be able to see in version history when and what they have done throughout the document. And finally, this is really great for student accountability. Uh, oftentimes we hear the complaints with student work or student group assignments that one student has done all of the work. In Google, they really can't hide behind that. So 
again, that version history, everything's going to be color coded by who has done what. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this from the student side of things. Now let's take a look at what a collaborative assignment looks like from the student side of things. I'm once again in my student account and just like before on my other two examples, I can click where it says collaborative assignment and get a preview of my assignment. But I'm going to go ahead and select view assignment so I can see everything more deeply. Now you'll notice one big difference. When I come in, here is that attachment that I'm going to be working on with my teammates. Over here under your work, I don't have any work assigned to me. As a student, I need to select here and it's going to open for me. Now, if this were view only, I would not have the ability to go through it. I wouldn't be able to make any changes to it. But I can tell that I have editing rights to this particular document because all of my toolbar is available to me. I can also see that another classmate of mine is currently working in the document because his uh, little icon shows up here in the upper right hand corner and I can also see going through my slides here on the left that there's a purple box here that's telling me that this is where my teammate or my classmate is going to be working. I can then click on my slide and begin to add my information. 